how many explorers are in? Oh no! Oh no! Oh. What's up guys, welcome back to Game Dev with AI, Papa Mike here and today I was very excited to finally show my game to my kids. I was very surprised it was quite successful, especially Eric enjoyed hitting the space bar and exploding everything on the screen and Melissa was controlling the mouse and together they made a great team. It was a lot of fun. So in this quick video I'm gonna show you all little improvements I did so far. We added the sounds, we improved our explosions, we added different sprites for our mouse cursor, depending on uh, the different situations. And of course, I improved the fat flying bird. Are you ready? Let's get to it. If you remember, in our last video, we were trying to animate this little funny fat seagull using the tools from AI and finally we implemented it to the game as a sprite and we even added sign behavior to make sure it's a kind of balancing back and forth kind of flying around. As you can see the bird is here and it's higher on the Z. It means the Z elevation is 50 which helps us to sell that we are in a 3D environment. If I paint the camera you can see it's kind of parallax effect, so you can see it's flying above the map. Now you, you would be asking me why I'm wasting so much time on this nonsense like this bird. But in my opinion, it's very important to keep things fun, especially when you're getting started and just developing your first game. It's very, very important to keep things very fun for you and for your kids. Otherwise, you can lose interest quickly if you get into boring details without covering the fun aspect of the development. So for me, if I see the smile on the kid's face, it's the main motivation for me to keep going. I hope this makes sense. That's why I waste so much time on things that don't really matter. But things like this will add dynamic to the game. It will make it more alive. We'll have different animals walking around and things like that that you can shoot as well. Now to more serious matters. First of all, I added different types of cursors so far. We already have this green X, but that wasn't a cursor. It was just a sprite appearing on the place where we commanded our unit to go. Then uh, this mode will be uh, when the mouse when we already selected the unit and we can command it to go to the specific location. This will be um, when we hover over enemy units. And this when we hover over the flag that we didn't capture. So we can capture the flag. Uh, and this sprite I made animated. It has several frames, like it's bouncing bigger and smaller but I wasn't able to make it animated cursor so if you know how to do it let me know in the comments below what I'm doing wrong you'll see the code in a minute so even though my sprite is animated it's appearing as animated if I put it on the map and if I but when I, I put it on the cursor it still shows as not animated not sure why Before we get to the code, it's important to explain uh, the requirements. This is a standard cursor we have. It's 32 by 32. First, I started setting image which is way too high and the limitations are 128 by 128. So if you put it bigger, it will not work. So this one 32 by 32 it look, looks very well. This will be our standard, the one that loads on the start of layout. Now, depending on what's the situation we have in the game, we need to change the cursor to either enemy target or the walk target or on the cursor grab for the flag. So you can see every 0.3 seconds, 
if our mouse cursor is not over x means inverted is not over enemies and our hero tank and our troops are not selected it means we are in a standard situation and we put a standard cursor back now we need to check if we selected our tank and we are hovering over enemy units it means we need to change cursor to the cursor enemy target then we check we check for the uh, working the same way so we check if we are not over enemies and we have selected our hero it means we need to command him where to go with cursor walk target and same we do for the our robots as well finally for the grab if we have here uh, our troop selected and our flag owner is not us it's somebody else then we change the cursor to the grab and here i forgot we need to do the same for the tank so we just copy paste and change instead of troop we'll be doing our hero tank here so it's the same because tanks can also capture the flags so that's all with cursors and if i run the game right now for you and we focus more on cursors as you can see on the start it's changing the cursor into this very nice green thing and if i zoom in zoom out it doesn't change here we have the bird here we have the bird going and if i select our unit you see it's changing to the cursor to the um, ready to walk now it's walking i select unit again and if the flag is not mine it's changing to the grab to the hand and if it's mine then it's not changing and if it's enemy it's changing to the target so everything is fine and the only question i have is why my cursor target enemy is not animating though i edit it here see cursor enemy target start animation i really don't understand why it's not animating and now you might ask me also why i'm doing this every 0.3 seconds and not every tick for some reason with cursors if i do every tick they kind of flickering around i don't know why but every 0.3 seconds works pretty well and clean finally to make things a little bit more fun i added few sounds first of all i found royalty free explosions it was a long file with a lot of explosions and i selected those that i like you can do it in any software because i use Pre adobe premiere i do, do this here but you can do it on audacity another free software audacity is very nice so basically the ones that i like i something like this i export them as mp3 format now in our constructs tree we scroll down to the sounds we right click we import sounds and we simply drag and drop here the program will encode them you can choose the bitrate as well the higher bitrate the longer it will be loading and then we have here all our sounds and if you have music you can put it to the music folder remember there is a big difference sounds load on the load of our game right away so those are small files and they load quickly and music will be streaming it's not loading that's why we need to separate sounds and music into separate folders here i don't have music yet so let's not worry about music for now now we have different file names and how we do it we add object called audi audi what's with my english today sorry about that we add object called audio 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 all right got it and we don't need to drag and drop it to the layout we just add it here and we can already use it let me show you how let's find our explosion where is our explosion 
yeah here remember with explosion i don't want the same sound to play all, all the time so i had three variations then for my explosion when it's great we choose random animation from three and then we create audio and we, we instead of writing exact file name we say play by name and we use string which says choose and then you simply write file names of the files that have different variations of our explosion simply at that and now when you play you can already see Cool, love it. This really makes a lot of fun hovering around and making some things on fire. So there you have it, that's all for today. Meanwhile, I get back to my journey where I need to create a lot of poses of different characters for animation, but that's whole another story. We'll talk about this in the next time. That's all for today. I hope you like our progress so far. And as always, let me know in the comments below what we should do next. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Papa Mike out.